Let's uh close the early forty five. So that we're we were doing that little tiny little and George Kemp there. It's just a drain stitch thing. Yeah, but and it's gonna take until October to do it. Yeah, they said the uh, first of September. Now it's first of October. Oh, you must have ran into a problem or something because yeah. I can I, I wasn't paying attention when the date was and then just yesterday I was coming home and I go October. It's just a little <coughs> over. Could have been a culvert, really. I'm glad they're doing it because I mean, it was probably very old rickety. Right? I don't think it took them that long to replace. The culvert thing in front of our, our place on Lake Line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I came in today and I came out to this one's a bush on that that way. Yeah. And then I get the bush and or come up family tree down the courthouse and oh, I'll just put down over here and didn't realize that center should be well under control. Nancy, can you hear us? We can't hear you. Nancy, can you hear us? Okay, I can see your lips moving, but I can't hear you. Uh, hold on. Ah. No. I still can't hear you. Where just going to fill in that through this and then, yeah, okay. How's that, Nancy? No, I can't hear you. Okay, let's try that now. How about now? Yep, there we go. Okay. I just, maybe I'll just read it. Sure. Okay, so you're with us now, are you? Yeah. Okay. Application E2520 KM Luke's Farms Incorporated and W and A Luke's Limited for a consent pursuant to section 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended to sever land municipally known as 34528 Lake Line, legally described as part of Lot A concession North Lake Road Township of Southold. The applicants propose to sever two irregularly shaped parcels with a total area of 512.4 square meters or 0 0.127 acres to be added to the adjoining residential lot, residential lot to the west. The owners are retaining 107.21 hectares or 264.92 acres proposed to remain in agriculture use. The applicants also propose to create an easement having a frontage of three meters or 9.84 feet along Lake Line by a depth of 103.069 meters or 338.15 feet proposed to provide access to hydro lines and poles in favor of KM Luke's Farms Incorporated and WA WNA Luke's Limited. So if you could just briefly go over your application here for us. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. This application on behalf of the Luke's Farms um, involves two separate but uh, similarly purpose small triangles of land. They will be a benefit to the adjoining residential lot uh, that adjoins the farm property we're speaking of. They'll be separate from a farm of over 260 acres to provide additional side lot to the residents, which is very, very close to the um, edge of its lot. And likewise, right behind, there's a farm lane, which um, has been very close to the house. So um, in the context of another application, which, which we'll be hearing very shortly, I hope, um, it actually will not be enlarging the residential lot at all. It, in fact, it is slightly decreased. Um, and uh, there, there's a compelling reason for the residential owner to transfer uh, a different triangle to the farm property. So we're presenting this as a lot adjustment and I'm prepared to, to submit um, the legal and technical reasons um, that have led to a rather confusing situation that the property owners really didn't realize existed or not in the way it does until they had the property surveyed um, at the time it was sold to the Luke's family earlier this year. Okay, thank you. So maybe Nancy, if you want to uh, go over the comments you have for us. Yeah. So the first comments are from the Township of Southwold who support the application and have asked for the following conditions. Um, that the septic system assessment be conducted on the proposed retained parcel to ensure that the lands are suitable for a privately owned and operated septic system. That a 0 0.09 square meter parcel of land be deeded to the Township of Southwold at the expense of the owner. That all financial obligations to the Township of South will be paid in full. That an ele electronic copy of the registered survey has been provided to the Township. That the proposed severed parcel become joined to and placed in the same title as the abutting property, 34526 Lake Line. And that the solicitor provides an undertaking that a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel, once the transaction has occurred, will be provided to the Township. Um, the county engineer had no comment on this application as it was not on a county road. And the uh, manager planning for the County of Elgin has no issues with this uh, proposed application, provided the following uh, conditions be, be used in the decision. A copy of the draft reference plan be provided prior to final approval. The draft reference plan will show the existing structures to ensure the severed parcels do not sever any existing buildings or structures. The severed land be merged on title with the abutting lot at 34526 Lake Line and that subsection three or five of the planning of section 50 of the planning act RSO 1990 as amended shall apply to any subsequent conveyance or transaction involving the subject lands. And as an aside, there were also comments provided from the um, Kettle Creek Conservation Authority and they had no issue with the application. All right, thanks Nancy. Um, we have a picture of the map here in front of us. Any comments, uh, discussion? From members of the land division committee and it appears jack i'm just curious as to one of those conditions maybe nancy could if she uh, explain that 0 0.09 hectare um, i don't know if that's for the land division to be concerned about but as a newbie i've never seen that kind of condition before oh, they do that all Thank you, Mr. Cherry. I'm reading the uh, Southwold uh, uh, report and I don't see a rationale for it. I can only assume it's probably has something to do with the road, but that's my guess. Um, I mean, we can certainly confirm that, um, but I, I would assume it has to do with uh, road can, road widening of some sort. Ian has come in. Okay. If you wish, I could comment on that. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, John. 
I was at the council meeting where there was some discussion of this, and uh, it has to do with the fact that um, the existing law or part of it was established on a consent in 1984 um, because some of these same technical issues that have survived were recognized um, and because the overall property was was being divided as a partnership between brothers dissolved um, there were applications made to the Upland land division committee and um, that resulted in the creation of um, really different parts, but three lots, one for one brother and, and his wife to own in their name, which had previously been part of the entire farm. The one we're talking about uh, that will be enlarged slightly by these two triangles and um, the one that had been uh, the previous generation's home. Uh, right to the east of it. So the, as I understood it, the, the um, um, planning uh, advice at Southhold was that um, they would be disturbing uh, consent that had been given by this committee, and therefore there should be a slight change made in the description, which would be um, the reason for taking and they don't care where it really is. It suggested it would be along the road somewhere, but it, it's a, like, like this is a square foot type of thing, uh, just so that it's not redoing that this decision that had been made in 1984. That was the gist of what I understood. And it didn't seem to be the first time. Um, I know another lawyer who's been representing one of the parties on this has, has said they've seen that condition before, but that was the reason for it, that it, it, to show that there is a change um, and it's not, um, so that, that is being changed. And then we're adding to, to reconfigure the lot in the manner of this application. Okay. Yeah. To ensure the lands can merge. Got it. Ensure the land. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's- One foot square. It's a technical issue where when you're, you're changing something, but you're really not changing it, it makes it different for the legal description. So it's yeah. it's a process basically is what it is, Jack. Okay. It's known as spoiling the lot, I believe. Um, and it's to ensure that the legal description will allow then a merge to occur. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or discussion from committee? Oh, may I just ask a quick question, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, there's a recommendation that the septic system assessment be conducted on the retained parcel. Um, the, 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 there is a, a septic assessment in the in the package in the application, and once again, it is absolutely minimalist. It, there's just virtually nothing there. Um, I, I would suggest that if they're going to go ahead with an assessment, that whatever assessment's done is done much more professionally. So, through you, Mr. Chair, I think um, that's probably why the municipality has uh, asked for this, um, because it's to their discretion. So, obviously, particular parameters or criteria that they need will now be included in any additional um, septic review or assessment that's required. So, well, I'm being unduly concerned here. I, through you, Mr. Chair, I think you're, you're just being cautious to ensure that that's being covered off and that the appropriate assessment is being conducted. So, Very diplomatic. Do you have a comment there at your end? Well, I'm just going to mention, I think the report that was provided is is actually for the next application where the retained lands um, have held a Doug Jones house on them. Uh, the farm right now doesn't have any septic system. With these coverances, all the houses were covered off it. And so it's just farmland. But I think that uh, the idea was there's no prohibition on having uh, a residence on a farm of over 160 acres and so they wanted to know that the land could support it well i'm sure it would depend on where the house was being built but that's what i took that to mean because uh, uh and in fairness the condition that the township is writing is that the land can support um a septic system 
not necessarily a detailed evaluation of the one that's there, but that there is enough dry or flat land, whatever is required to retain that. So here, the retained land is actually the whole uh, agricultural acreage, and we're no house at this point. Thank you. So, any further discussion or comment on that? Moved. John Andrews moves that accept the application. Seconded by Ian Fleck. Okay. Do a recorded vote. Andrews. Yes. Fleck. Yes. O'Grady. Yep. Kennedy. Yes. Selden. Yes. Ben Castron. Yes. Aldred. Yes. Motion carries seven to zero. And they were he's talking about one previously done. It. You can let him know that. That's uh, and and you made reference to the other application, which we done previously. We couldn't get you online. We done previously, and it passed seven to nothing too. So both applications that went through, we've made our life easy. Thank you very much. <laughs> so this the verbiage I'm reading here will apply to both applications. Okay. The decision rendered today for this application, E2420 and E2520, will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There's a 20-day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal the decision or any conditions imposed. If no appeal is received within 20 days of the giving of the notice, provisional consent becomes final. The applicant the applicants have one year to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documentation for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you'd like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at npasato at elgin.ca. A copy of the comment package is also available upon request and includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Thank you. The next person is outside, so I'm just going to go get them. Thank you very much for your input. Okay, so we're after 1115, we can carry on. Would you please identify yourself? Dan McKillop. Thank you. Application E2620 Pioneer Hay Sales, Hay Sales Limited for consent pursuant to Section 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended to several lands municipally known as 29913 Chalmers Line, legally described as part of Lot 14 Concessions for our Municipality of Dutton Dunwich. The applicants proposed to sever a lot with a frontage of 51 meters along Chalmers Line by a depth of 156 meters and an area of 8,000 square meters or 1.98 acres, containing one house, garage, and dog kennel. Proposed to create one new lot surplus to the needs of the owner. The owners are retaining a 19.54 hectares or 48.28 acres proposed to remain in agricultural use. So maybe if you could pull a map up and Mr. McKillop could explain their application to us, please. I have control of this mouse or no? Oh. Uh, I, I guess it's a pretty straightforward, uh, I've been here before, it's a, an access uh, dwelling and uh, they, uh, uh, when the surveyors come in, we, we try to go as, uh, as narrow as we could with the natural uh, uh, tree line and the hedge, and at the back of the uh, of the lot, we we kept the trees inside. There's a fish pond 
a fairly good sized fish pond back in the back of the well. So we, try, we did the best we could to make it as small as we could. Well, it's, uh, but uh, it's been that way for a number of years since the Wilton's owned the prior. And so it's, uh, it's just a pretty straightforward request. I, I can tell you that the septic system has been replaced and the weeping bed's been replaced. Okay, thank you. Nancy, maybe if you want to make your comments. Yes. So the municipality of Dutton Dunwich has recommended approval of this um, application, provided the following conditions are applied. That a zoning bylaw amendment is in force and effect for the severed and retained parcels. That septic system review for the severed parcel has been completed. That a municipal drain reapportionments have been completed. That a mutual drain agreement under section two of the drainage act has been provided to provide a legal drainage outlet for the newly created residential lot that two hard copies and one digital copy of the registered survey have been provided to the municipality, that taxes are to be paid in full, that all Dutton Dunwich planning applications set out in the fees by law be paid to the municipality, and that the solicitor provides an undertaking that a copy of the registered deed for the severed parcel, once the transaction has occurred, will be provided to the municipality. The comments from the Lower Thames um, Conservation Authority were provided yesterday, and they indicated there was no issue with this application. The county engineer, I believe, provided comment. They had no issue with this application as it is not on a county road. And the manager of planning for the county of Elgin provided this co these comments. Uh, the consent has been reviewed in conjunction with the 2020 provincial policy statement. Policy 2.3.4 discourages law creation in agricultural areas and may only be permitted for agricultural uses agriculture related uses, infrastructure and a residence surplus to a farming operation as a result of farm consolidation provided that the new lot will be limited to a minimum size needed to accommodate the use and appropriate sewage and water services. And the planning authority ensures that new residential dwellings are prohibited on any remnant parcel of farmland created by the severance. In the opinion of staff, the applicant has not demonstrated the need for the large size of the lot. A reduction in lot size is recommended. From the County of Elgin official plan, the subject site is within the agricultural designation for the Elgin County official plan. County OP contains policy related to lot creation on lands in the agricultural area. New lots may be permitted if the local OP supports their creation and if the lot is considered surplus to farming operation as a result of a farm consolidation, provided that the development of a new residential use is prohibited on any retained parcel farmland created by the consent to sever, unless the retained parcel is the product of the merging and title of two adjacent agricultural parcels, in which case a dwelling unit would be permitted as part of the operation. Uh, while the County of Elgin supports consents for a residence surplus to a farming operation, the provincial policy statement states that the new lot will be limited to a minimum size needed to accommodate the use and appropriate sewage and water services. The committee may wish to consider reducing the size of the proposed residential lot. Staff recommend deferral of the consent until a revised plan showing a possible reduced lot area be provided by the applicant. Those were all the comments provided. Okay, thanks, Nancy. Okay, comments from discussion from committee members. Dennis. Just a quick question. I see McCall recommended the septic bed go in front. Did you put it in front uh, on your sketch? It shows in the back. As far as I know, it's in the back. I have, I wasn't there when they just, just went in. Sorry. Yeah. I was there at the site the, the other day. The new septic system is all in the front yard because of there's no, the septic in the backyard has been decommissioned. But I understand because of the fall in the front, it works better. The house is lower where it comes out than some of the back. The backyard seems to rise up. So it, it is all in the front yard. Uh, the only concern I have on it, as we're talking about size and that, is the size of the backyard from the house way back. And I agree there's a tree line, some trees back there, but there's a large backyard. If anywhere, that's the only place it could be deemed to take away some of the property is it's quite a large backyard. It's larger than the front yard by quite a bit. And the fish pond is in about, is closer to the house than it is to the back of the yard. Further comment, discussion, Dennis? Tell me about that fish pond. Is it actually a fish pond or just an old slough? No, no, it, uh, the Wilton's actually had uh, fish, uh, um, don't ask me variety, but they actually had fish in it. 
And then, uh, as, as we know, in the natural uh, habitat of things, uh, when birds come in, they'll bring fish eggs on their, uh, on their feet, and then uh, they'll start to, so they wound up with goldfish in it and different fish. They had to, to uh, take some out because it was uh, not good for the fish that were there. It's just, uh, yeah, it's been, a, been there for quite a while. So if I can continue. So the size of a lot, there seems to be trees on the, is that, Assuming north is to the top of this? Yes. Trees are on the west and trees are on the south. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. But you seem to have a bit of room to maneuver on the east side. Is that, am I reading that right? Oh, there's trees on the east side all the way back to past the house. Oh, okay. Because there's no T's on this sketch. Oh, there's, there's trees on the... Trees all three sides? On the east side, there's trees back to behind the house. Okay. By that one building that's a shed. If I could, Mr. Chair, the surveyor uh, under direction from, from the owner and myself, we tried to keep it inside uh, uh, or as close as, to the trees as we can. Um, we're trying to avoid having to have the trees uh, removed. Uh, I mean, it's just a good environmental thing. I understand uh, that there's no agricultural land uh, being. Um, Eclipse there, I guess, for lack of a better word, we're not trying to take it. It's, it's never been agricultural land used for agriculture. Let me rephrase that. I understand the zoning. It, it hasn't been used for agricultural land for 50, 60 years or more. And uh, so it just didn't. Further back, there was another group of trees in a pond, and they we, we knew that couldn't stay. So they filled in the pond and taken the trees out. But uh, they, if you look at the See where this was here. That, that is gone. No, still in the end. So we, we've tried to be both environmentally friendly and, and we, we kept it under the two hectare the best we could. I know they like to go around the one now, but we've done the best we can. Further comments, discussion? Direction we want to take? John, I guess when there's trees, can you legally cut them? Like, is it? It's they're fair size, aren't they? Fair, fair size. Yeah. Side. The only spruce trees that I notice you could touch would be the ones right along the back of the lot line. And are those? The rest of them you couldn't touch. How much the ones on the back lot line, right on the lot line? Pretty well where they're talking to have it. Yeah. Okay. John, you had something else you want to say? How much would we really gain? Right. Uh, Something to what the committee thinks. I'll move we accept it we proposed. So John moved. We have a second. I'm gonna second that. And or Jack rather, Jack Van Castro. So this is a move to uh, support the application? Yep. Okay. So I'll go through the vote. Andrews? Yes. Black. Yes. O'Grady? Yep. Kennedy? No. Selden? Yes. Van Castron? Yes. Aldred? Yes. Motion carries six to one. Okay. Okay, the decision rendered to <laughs> for this application E26 20 will be circulated within 15 days after the notice. There is a 20 day appeal period from the giving of the notice of decision in which any person or public body may appeal decision or any condition imposed. No appeal is received. In 20 days of the giving of the notice, the provisional consent becomes final. It's one year to meet the conditions imposed and submit the necessary documents for certification or the consent will lapse and a new application will be required. Please leave the identification signs in place until the appeal period ends, after which they can be removed. If you'd like to be notified of today's decision, please request a copy by contacting Nancy Passato at npasato at elgin.ca. Copy of the comment package is also available on request and includes all correspondence received. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your support. And uh, I'd also like to thank Nancy and Curtis for their uh, uh, patience in this trying to get on today on uh, the website. And uh, I'll try to do better. <laughs> Thank you.
Do we have to do a motion to close the meeting? No. Okay. Good. Do we do a motion to close? We do. We can. Do to adjourn? Just to adjourn. I don't think I have to do a motion. And always say if there's no further business to come before this meeting, I adjourn it. Okay. Great. As per Robert's rules of order. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that then, Nancy. Okay, great. Adjourned. Thank you, everyone.